I'm here with uh, Mark Montgomery in Zantusia, yeah. and you can see the beautiful uh, mountains in the background. So, Mark is a uh, professional triathlete. Retired. Retired. Yeah. And uh, we're here in the Antelope Valley in uh, Valiermo. So, uh, Mark, why don't you uh, just give us uh, a, a few minutes with a little bit of background about why you think America is a great country? Um, well, <clears throat> one of the uh, the benefits, you know, of being a, a professional athlete for 15 years is I got to travel around the world um, like a millionaire without being one, <laughs> and uh, I got to see, you know, how people really lived. Um, you know, it wasn't just five star hotels here and there. You know, I, I stayed a lot of homestays. Um, you know, just about every country in Europe, you know, Asia, uh, South America, I mean, you name it, you know, I, I got to travel to these places. People, you know, the, the real people are great everywhere, but uh, when, when, you, uh, when you look at, you know, the, uh, the governments or regimes or, or how they had to live, um, and you come back here, you, you know, it was always a great feeling, you know, when you cross the border and you came through customs and you went, whew, you know, it was good to be home. And, you know, and I always, I always you know, tried to uh, think, you know, you know, where did that feeling come from? And it was, you know, just basically, you know, that there were, everywhere I went, there were certain restrictions or freedoms that you didn't have, you know. I mean, of course, you always want to respect every, uh, every other country's um, uh, laws and, and traditions and, and but uh, you know some of them were a stretch for somebody coming from the US you know we grow up with such um, you know I mean that's you know uh, hardwired into us you know you know the, the freedoms and things we have and we just take them for granted I think most of the time until you go somewhere else where people don't have those freedoms. I think um, as we look around the country today so many Americans are angry it seems like everybody's you know, got to complain about something. Yeah, well, you know, I I, uh, I don't think it's any different. I think there's always angry people. Um, there have always been angry people. I mean, as far back as I can remember, you know, uh, especially the losing side. There, because there are always angry people, and there's no, uh, there's nothing newsworthy in interviewing somebody who's happy and satisfied and okay with things. So, you know, it's, uh, and I've always felt that way, it, you know, in the news, they'll slant, you know, they don't really care which side they slant on, but they always slant on the small fringe group because it helps bring conflict, and conflict seems to be what, you know, gets ratings. Well, based upon that, Mark, if, if you um, had the power today, if you were the number one man <clears throat> in charge, what is it that you would change about our country? It seems like special interest uh, gets stronger and stronger. And, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in, uh, you know, democracy and all, all of that. But um, if, you know, left unchecked or, or um, you know, just to its own devices, um, you know, people are always going to try to co-opt that, and uh, which has always been the case, but, you know, we've always... You know, protected against that, and uh, it, and it just seems like to me that over, you know, the last few decades, that uh, you know, special interests, whatever they may be, um, are getting more and more of a stranglehold on uh, our politicians. That's something that's it's kind of a, a systemic cancer-like thing, and if it just continues to grow, then eventually um, our democracy will stop working, and. Um, so I think uh, getting at the root of, uh, you know, who's actually pulling the purse strings of, uh, you know, the people that we elect, you know, to make decisions, you know, for us.